we are talking about data representation and uh, there is a couple of things uh, here. So first of all, uh, well, we will start by talking about uh, the binary number system and how it affects uh, certain things when it comes to uh, store saving files. And uh, then we will take a couple of practical examples, uh, coding examples, and uh, finally we will be looking at the different types of, of um, text files. So basically all of these this, um, lectures and these lessons things are related to data storage. And this is especially important for the practical assignment because in the practical assignment you are going to be processing data that is stored in a file. Uh, so anyway, uh, we start off here. So we have already discussed uh, some of the different data types that we can use in Python. So we know there is uh, textual data, numeric data, so uh, that is uh, integer numbers, floating point numbers. Um, there are also uh, imaginary numbers and ve vectors, but we haven't really covered them a, a lot, but, but all sorts of numbers. Uh, composite data structures such as lists and lists and, and tuples and uh, uh, dictionaries. But so far we haven't really talked about uh, what sort of data structures are there related to storing data, especially in files. So if you remember a few weeks back, we looked at files and how to store data in a inside a file. So now it's time time to revisit files and look at the uh, contents of, of uh, data files and the and the structures in with which we can we can store data into files. So anyway, last time we talked about text file with text files where um, everything inside is um, all text, all letters, numbers, um, something that's that's human readable. So basically, uh, rows of text delimited by by um, new lines. So one piece of data is is uh, written on one line, and the next next piece of data is on on the next line, and so on and so on. Now this often uh, well, this is a good place to start, but it doesn't really represent the reality where. Uh, in, in reality, when we have computer software that save files, um, anything from spreadsheets to word processing to your internet browser, uh, they all use different files to store, store data. And not all the files are actually made out of text. Uh, oh, well, actually, to be technically precise here, um, all files do contain text, but often the text is not really human readable, so we, we wouldn't call it text if we if we saw it. So we we are looking at text and textual characters, but um, it's it's not exactly English or or Finnish or or anything that that we could would consider as human. So basically here the question is how is, is um, how could data be represented? How does it um, work with with files? So how can we store and represent data in, inside files uh, so that the data when, when the data is not actually in a, in a text form? Okay, so the first step towards understanding how data is stored is really understanding how how computers process data and the first thing here is is the number system that they use so um and now when i talk about a number system i basically mean the the way that we are used to writing and manipulating numbers so uh, humans usually use the decimal system so we have a base 10 numbering system and that uses uses exactly 10 10 numeral symbols so from 0 to 9 and each possible possible number 
at least natural numbers we can we can represent using uh, these digits so anything be between zero and nine or a combination of them and there is a specific way of how we decipher these numbers as well so basically the rightmost most digit here um, tells us the the ones the uni units in in which we are counting the next digit tells us uh, how, how many tens of those units we have the following tells us how many hundreds of units we have and so on and so on all to all the way to thousands uh, tens of tens of thousands hundreds of thousands and eventually millions and, and billions so uh, the way how we read numbers um, The way how we read numbers really um, is, is um, important here because, well, while computers and humans do read numerals the same way, we use a different numbering system. So for computers, sometimes it's more effective to use some other numbering system than the decimal system. So you. Often we see something called hexadecimal, which is uh, a base, uh, a number system based on on the number 16. Of uh, from zero to letters from F, so we have a total of 16 different symbols with which we can represent numbers. So basically, um, after nine. Uh, doesn't co doesn't come um, 10 in in the same way that we would have in the uh, decimal system. We would have uh, we would have a, and after a we would have b, and after b we would have c, all the way down to f, because that's 16 16 different num numeric symbols. Um, the other really really common number system that computers use is the binary system and this number system is even even more bizarre because now instead of having more symbols to to denote numbers now we only have have two symbols that's zero and one which is also why it's called a binary system there is all, all there is only two different symbols uh, to de denote numbers with So basically, um, to understand a little bit how this this uh, process of um, storing data on a computer works, we sort of have to understand a little bit of how uh, the uh, computer and the processor looks at numbers. And of course, there we come the binary number system. Um, so basically, you may have heard that computers store numbers as only ones and zeros using a binary format inside its memory. So again, the binary uh, uh, by uh, in binary means it's a it's a base two number system. And um, while in the decimal system we have we have a uh, base ten number system, meaning we can indeed use ten different digits to to um, write numbers. In the binary system, we only have have two digits. So now we're in the decimal system. Uh, we we have the we have the units here at the rightmost digits digit. Um, this does not change in the in the binary system, so we still have the units right here. Um, what changes, however, is what the next number here means. And uh, instead of denoting tens, now it denotes twos. Uh, the following number to the left, instead of uh, denoting hundreds, it denotes fours. Uh, the following number denotes denotes eights the next one 16 and the final final one in this example denotes 32 so instead of going step by step um, 10 folds apart now we are only uh, only only going um, twice as as high in this in this scheme 
So basically, uh, when we have a binary number that consists of a series of ones and zeros, such as uh, 101000, which um, represents um, uh, the number 40, by the way. So uh, this is the equivalent of a, a, a decimal 40. <coughs> we often um, write the number system or the base of the number system as, as a sub-index here. So here there would be a sub-index 10 here and here would be a sub-index 2 just to denote that these are numbers from two different systems. So basically again um, counting in the system is rather simple. I mean it is it must be simple because it's um, uh, designed for a, for a machine, a computer to do really quickly. Uh, so how we would um, decipher this this binary number? Well we would look at all these all these numbers where uh, or these number places where there is a one and simply grab their decimal value from here and um, add them together. So here you could see like 32 plus eight uh, equals 40. That's why this, this number number in binary represent, represents a decimal, decimal 40. Um, so basically counting the powers of two in this bit string gives us the value of the number in decimal. So a fairly fairly simple number system. And uh, if number systems are not not already familiar to you, um, this do doesn't matter. But I encourage everyone to at least look at a, at an article uh, on online somewhere where all of this is explained in detail. This is more like a very quick summary of, of how the, the different num number systems work and especially how the binary number system works. Be more intuitive and more useful for uh, us as, as an exercise on this on this programming course is to how to is maybe to answer the question how to uh, build a program that can convert binary numbers to decimal or perhaps later on decimal numbers numbers to binary. So let's think about a little of how to do that, or let's take an example of how to do that. Uh, here we are. So if we start from the very beginning, hmm, let me pull, just pull up the code editor once again. Here we are. So in this example, we are making a binary to uh, decimal converter. So the first thing we should do is probably um, ask for a number. And of course, we will use the input command to do that. So just going to ask for a text input where the user can uh, type a binary number. What follows is the um, way to convert these, these binary numbers into their dec decimal counterparts. Uh, so we might start by uh, looking at the number itself. I'm going to do this in, in small steps, so I'm not going to write it, write it all at once. So let's first look at maybe um, how long this this uh, the given binary number is going to be, and of course this we might find out with the with the uh, len command. Let's do this first, and let's say we know a couple of couple of binary numbers. Uh, I'm just going to type them here. And these numbers we're going to use for for test for testing this this calculator. So, for example, the binary uh, the decimal equivalent um, or binary one is um, also one 
in decimal. We also know that binary one zero is two in decimal. Uh, one zero zero is four to uh, finally do and one zero one would be five. So let's use these number numbers to test a little. Um, so right now this this converter does nothing but uh, let's just uh, see the how how many characters each of these these num numbers have. So if we type in a binary number, let's say the binary for five would be 101. And if I type it correctly using only only ones and zeros, we see we have a number and it's um, three three numerals long. OK, so what do I do? What do we do with this this information? Um, so the key here, how to decipher the bin binary, is to look at each of these individual numerals and um, reading from right to left, we need to decipher their value. And in this previous example, we looked at the exact values of these numbers. So uh, the rightmost um, digit here is going to be uh, representing the ones. The second one is go uh, the second digit is going to be twos. The next one is going to be fours. The next one eights. The next one sixteens. The next one is thirty twos. And if we were to continue, the following no uh, digit would um, signify sixty fours. Uh, the one after that, uh, the one hundred and twenty eights, and so on and so on. So this all follows a pattern. And of course, a pattern is, is something very helpful. We can use that uh, in order to convert uh, this, this number. Um, so, well, first of all, um, as we are reading these from these numbers from uh, right to left, um, we don't necessarily have to, but it helps a lot to do it. So we could, what we could do is flip this, this number uh, from back to front. So what I'm going to do here is um, make a slice here uh, that uses, uses this um, uh, min minus one jump to basically take the reverse of this, of this uh, number. So if we look at the contents now, what, what we have as the number then, uh, let's say we uh, type in a binary number of 100, which in decimal would be 100, in binary it's, it's exactly 4. Uh, we look at how we have processed it, we see we have turned it around. So that's the first step to, to try and figure out the, the uh, value. So next, we should probably see uh, process this this number, this uh, string of bits, uh, one digit at a time, and uh, start adding up those values. So to do something like that, we of course need a a loop, and in this case, a for loop. And what we want to do is. Um, move exactly as many steps as there in is in this in this um, string of bits, which means we should um, we should figure out the length of this um, length of this um, this uh, bit string. So we get that of course with the with the length com command like this and then we can uh, take a range from from zero to whatever that that length is. And now that we are 
working on this on these numbers. Uh, so, for example, for this this decimal five and binary 101, we would be starting with this uh, first digit on the right, then we would be moving to the next one and the next one. And again, if you remember from this example, the key here is um, which of these numbers uh, is a one and which of them is a zero. So only the ones count. Right. So next up, we would basically just try to determine. So let me just um, write that as a, as a comment here. Determine which uh, digits are one, because if if the digit is is one, add its value to the um, the overall sum. Okay. So for this, we probably need um, some variable in which to store the decimal value of the of the um, uh, bit string. So presumably um, all numbers are at least zero always. So we here we initialize the decimal con, uh, number as a zero. OK, next up, uh, let's just see, is that one decimal a, a zero or a one? So if our binary number uh, in position I, which is going to be just these, these um, numbers from zero to uh, whatever the length of this of this bit string is, and if that bit on that position, so basically from this, the ith position is going to be is going to be a one. Then we need to add this position's value to the um, overall decimal number, and that would be done by. Uh, adding whatever value uh, value this this bit has to the decimal decimal uh, variable so that's going to be decimal plus um, to the power of i now why to the power of i so once more these uh, numbers that you he see here are actually um, powers for whatever is the ba base number for your number system. So in our in our decimal number system, uh, the ones here are ones because uh, one to the power because 10 to the power zero is one. Uh, the next digit denotes tens because 10 to the power of one is 10. The following denotes hundreds because 10 to the power of 2 is 100. Same goes for the binary system. So uh, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, uh, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is, is 4, and 2 to the power of 3 is 8, and so on and so on. So here we just take uh, whatever this, this uh, digit happens to rep represent this um, uh, power to the two value and it starts from zero and goes all the way all the way up to uh, how many how many digits there are in that number so now now it makes sense why to make this this range here go from zero to uh, however long this this um, bit string is and that pretty much should should do everything that we need here so incrementing this this decimal value if and only if this this one uh, binary symbol here is a one. So let's see what the conversion is. So let's look at the uh, binary. Um,
the binary something um, in decimal is going to be decimal. Okay, let's see if this if this now works. Huh. And of course, this this i in range needs uh, the in keyword. Right here we go. Okay, so let's type in one of these binary numbers. So let's um, start with a, with a one. And we can see binary one uh, in decimal is one, just like it says so here. So maybe this, this uh, converter works. Let's see with, with more numbers. So binary one zero would be a two. Let's run it once, once more. Uh, so binary one zero zero would be a four. And maybe once more, uh, one zero one would be a five in, in decimal. Right, so that more or less works. Um, so the idea here is more um, more than to uh, go go very deeply into number systems. It's just to give a brief overview of, of how they work. But um, as you may imagine, this is, is not probably something that you would be doing all the time, even though this exercise as a, as a um, design for, for the code, how to do this is, is somewhat, somewhat useful maybe. Um, in practice, th there is an easier way to do the same thing. Um, you can probably imagine um, um, this conversion between between binary and decimal is something uh, is something that uh, may already be included in the programming language, and it actually turns out um, that there is a easier way to do the conversion. Uh, were to have to actually do it for here it's um, this example was more an, an, an illustration of how, how the how the number systems work but if you were to actually do this you might uh, do something a bit more simple uh, so it turns out you can actually use the uh, for, for integers and for floating point numbers, you can actually um, put in a binary them if you specify that we are talking about uh, numbers which are uh, binary numbers by specifying the base base for for that number system, saying uh, the base for this number is is in fact two and not ten, and then uh, int or float will will process it accordingly. So you might say um, then the uh, actually let's call this decimal instead. Right there we go. So this should be a a, a one line alternative to the uh, long code that we that we just made on the fly. Uh, but this is more uh, a, 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 pra a practical side note, um, st still being able to do that that conversion by hand. It's a it's a good a good a good exercise to do. But as a practical side note, I should just say, uh, please don't don't ever actually do that. But it is more uh, an illustration for the uh, sake of sake of the topic um, today. So now that we have briefly looked at the number systems, why do we know, need to know about that in practice? I mean, the programming language already has some some interfaces like you saw just the, the like what you just saw the uh, int integer or int function knows how to handle binary numbers on its own why do we need to even talk about binary well 
yes, there are interfaces that hide how, how the computer systems work uh, deep down uh, on the processor level. But the number system that the computer uses has an effect on how data files can be stored. Um, here we talk about something called binary files. So now uh, to understand what a binary file is, we need to understand first of all what a file is and also what, what binary is, what binary numbers are. So a binary file is a file that's, that's not a text file. So actually the term binary file often is used in the meaning of um, something other than a text file. So as the computer's processor understands numbers and the number systems differently to humans, it's, it's often uh, beneficial to be able to store these files in a, in a more, uh, more um, native format to the computer's processor. So binary files are something that typically contain some, some bytes or uh, one, ones and zeros. Um, to be precise, a byte is, is, is eight bits and one bit is one, one, one or zero. Uh, anyway, the idea here is that binary files contain some, uh, some ones and zeros that can be interpreted as something other than text characters. So as, ex as examples of what these could be, we'll think of images or sounds or maybe compressed files or uh, funnily enough, also the computer programs that, that we um, use or the computer programs that we write ourselves often are in, in a, are stored in a binary file. So basically any type of file uh, content whatsoever could be represented in, 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 a, uh, in a binary format. And because binary files are really common, that's why we should look at also how they work. And it turns out they are not re a really complicated concept, concept because uh, in Python, you can simply make binary fi files of your own or read binary files by specifying, um, well, first of all, you open a file as you would do, do with, a, with a text file. Uh, but instead of the usual text reading or text writing writing mode, you specify uh, specify a binary read mode mode or a binary write mode. Um, after read, uh, after opening the file, you need um, some help from from libraries to store the data or to read from from this uh, binary file. But there are built-in libraries in in Python. Um, uh, specifically, there is a library called Pickle. And how that would work, um, let's take a couple of examples of, of uh, how to work with binary files. Or actually, let's first um, look at a use case and then, then see how binary files could help. So binary files. So here, let's imagine that we have um, a, a program that contains a list of, of some data. Pro program contains data in a, in a list. So whatever that data is uh, right now, it doesn't doesn't matter. But um, let's say it's it's some list. So we create a list, and uh, let's just put some put some content contents into the list. So let's just I'm just going to list a few numbers, and that's going to be our our data for the purposes of of this demonstration. And next up, we do 
we want to store the contents of, of this uh, data or this data list. So usually what we would do or what we would have to do. Um, so ba basically, um, well, let's first of all just try saving whatever is in this list called data into a file. So let's first of all uh, open a open a file. I'm just going to uh, call it a text file because it's a traditional traditional text file as and this is going to be and I will name it write file here and as you may remember from a few weeks ago to the way to store something or to write something in a in a text file is to use uh, the dot write function right here or uh, dot write method here. So write file dot write and then whatever we want to write into this file we just put in, inside the parentheses. So the question here is if we want the of, of this list, this list that we call data, uh, would it not be convenient if we could just um, say okay what we want to write is this is this list called data. Now, if we were to run this, um, we're going to get an error because um, the parameter for this uh, for this write uh, method uh, cannot be something that's that's not a a string of text. So when I have put this this variable data here, what write wants me to put here inside the parentheses is something that's text, but this of course is not text, it's a list of numbers. So uh, to get around that, um, this is what I so this is what I want to do. But of course we cannot do that exactly. So what we would probably have to do is take each of these elements individually, convert them into text, and uh, then write them to the file. So we might do that by saying for item in data, um, and then we would uh, convert each item into text. That would be done with with str. So that's uh, the str of of uh, of item. Here we are. And finally, we would need to write this um, piece of text into the file. So write file dot write. And uh, we want the text right here. So now we're going through this list one element at a time, converting e each element into a string of text and writing them into the uh, the text file. So let's see if this works. So if I run run this. OK, now at least we don't get an error. So of course, now we have to look at this this file, this um, text file and for some reason I didn't even uh, specify a, a file extension for it um, but no matter let's just uh, open it up so we want something called text file right here and if we look at this yes we we sort of got all of these items yeah uh, we didn't write them on on uh, individual rows however so now instead of getting the numbers one two three four and five we actually got uh, 12,345 this is probably not what we wanted so let's add a new line character at the end and of course we have to join this with a with a plus so it's this 
text plus the, the new line character here. Run this code once again. And then we take a look at the text file once again. Here we are. Now we have these uh, numbers, one, one number on each line. Now it's more like what, what we needed to do. Um, so this all works and there is nothing wrong with this. Uh, however, if we think about uh, this starting point where, where we what we wanted to do in the first place. This is what we want to do. We simply want to say, OK, we want to write this piece of this data, whatever it is, into a file. But now we have to process this in a in a complicated way, and we have had to write this this one line that we what we want to do uh, with with sev with several different commands, and this doesn't seem very convenient. So I suppose the next question is: Is there a better way to do that? So this is is why we have binary files. So the binary file. Uh, is, is the better way to do this. The binary file is the solution for this problem. So here, um, let's keep this. This is what we want to do line and this uh, this line storing all our data. So what we might do is uh, again in, with help from from the uh, inbuilt inbuilt libraries. Uh, again, Pickle is a library that helps with binary files. So now, if instead of a text file, we specify that this file should be a binary file. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we need to specify that we're opening this in in uh, binary mode. So instead of just W, uh, we say WB. B standing for uh, B stands for binary. And I'm going to rename this a little. So from write file to binary file, just so we can keep track of what it is that we're doing. And then we can come back to this line of what, what it is that we actually want to do. So uh, from this pickle library, we can use a, a function, a method called dump, uh, which works uh, as follows. So uh, what we specify is the uh, data that we want to write and this uh, na name of, the, of, the, of this variable that points to a file. So binary file. Here we are. And uh, now if I run this, we see that now suddenly um, <clears throat> something happened. Of course, we cannot, ca cannot see what yet, uh, but let's take a look Into the folder where I have all of these all of these uh, files. Um, actually, let's do one more modification. Instead of saying text file, let's say it's a it's a binary file. Uh, let's call it bin file bin. And once again, run run this one once more just for uh, just for clarity. Okay. And now we go ahead and try to see if something happened. We can see there is a binary file. Uh, you can see the type here, a bin standing for binary. Well, actually, you can specify whatever file extension you want. But bin will work. Uh, let's try to open it and see what happens. So what it is saying right, right away is in that the editor doesn't really understand how uh, to process this. So there must be something wrong. You have to specify something. Um, let's just click OK and see uh, 
what we get as a, as a result. So this is, is now the file that we wrote just now. And you can see it's, it's full of uh, garbage. Well, uh, it's not garbage, it is the data that we just wrote there. It is the data inside this, this uh, list. Uh, it's just, it's not in a human readable form. And this is the, the benefit and uh, in a way also the downs downside to binary files. So now we, we could simplify uh, the process of writing this data into a file using only this one, one line here. But what we end up with is a file that's not readable anymore. Uh, well, at least not readable to our human eyes. I'm not going to try to save that. Um, so we have successfully managed to write a binary file. How do you how do we read it? So uh, here we do something very similar. So we need to open a open a variable. Well, we need to open a file and assign a variable name for it. Uh, so I think we use uh, bin file, bin as the file name, and now instead of um, writing in binary, we want to read in binary. And this is going to be again, uh, let's call it binary file again, just to be consistent. And then we can retrieve the binary data uh, using something from the pickle library once again. So pickle.load. And we specify that we want to load something from this binary file. And maybe we then try to uh, extract the items on, on the list that we just uh, read from this binary file. So let's say for item in for item in uh, binary data in each each item right here. Let's see if this works. Uh, And now we have successfully re retrieved the data inside that, that binary file. All the numbers are intact. So binary files are used to store data um, if you are working with, with Python and Python's, um, well, if you're working with a programming language, in this case, Python, and in our case, Python's data structures. So we can easily save uh, data from the program into a binary file and unload it, and it's uh, basically just a, just a one-line operation. Uh, this is very convenient if we only read Binary data, uh, binary data files using Python or using whatever programming language we want to use. Um, however, the thing is, different programming languages use different kinds of data structures. So, data stored uh, using this this Python data format may not be compatible with programs written in other languages. So, using a binary uh, binary file. Uh, the downside is that then we're, we're sort of limited to the Python uh, data structures only. Um, to solve this problem, there are some independent, uh, independent of programming language type file formats. Uh, these are again text files that have a well-defined fixed form and hence they are called or they could be called uh, fixed form files and we're going to look at one of these common fixed form uh, data file types uh, the csv uh, the csv is a fairly simple simple uh, file type uh, csv stands for comma separated values and um, a csv is is does not have a standard of, of any kind um, 
there does not exist a common way of doing this, so CSV files can actually vary a lot, uh, but um, also its underlying idea is quite simple. Um, all a CSV file contains are some uh, some uh, some text separated with, with commas or semicolons, and, and that's it. So really, you can store anything as long as it's comma separated, it, con, uh, it, uh, it um, qualifies as a comma se separated value file. As an example, we have, have one, one comma separated file on uh, the course page that you can look at. And that is a, a file, I think, which is called um, cats.csv. And what this file contains are some names, sizes, um, uh, colors, and um, description of, of what, 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 what the code or fur of a particular cat um, has. So if we look at this, this file, let me, let's just comment this previous example away right here. Here we are. So we look at the example file cats.csv. Um, so if we start by just simply opening up a CSV file and seeing what it contains. Um, so we would do that with, of course, opening a file. So this is uh, cats.csv. And we just want to open it for reading. Going to call it cat file right now. And what I might do with this is remember again, a file is a collection of, of different rows. So I might uh, go over this row by row. So I'm going to see if I say for row, row in cat file, and just print each row. And um, if you remember um, printing rows, um, You need to trim the uh, end for for the extra new line characters. So you might say uh, row dot strip like this. Let's see if this works. Um, Okay, it did not work. Why? Um, let's see if for once um, we have. Ah, yes, we did not. Um, a spelling mit mistake, not a not a code mistake. So let's try again. So we uh, open this this uh, text file. Uh, give it the name, and then we go through this this file one row at a time. Okay, let's try this once more. Here we are. So, as you can see on the left, uh, this is uh, the actual contents of each uh, row on this on this um, file cats.csv, and in actual fact the contents are also described here. So the idea of the CSV file is, is simple, as I said. So the file just contains some data, so either numbers or text, which are separated by a specific character, which is usually either the comma or the semicolon. It's actually less often the comma, which is funny because the file name stands for comma separated values, but it just turns out the uh, separator usually actually is a semicolon. And here in our example, we have a file that contains some some data. 
So on the first row, we have uh, the explanations for the in, uh, for what this what this file contains. Uh, so basically, the first row of data is uh, this. The first row here is just a a title row, and then we have the individual data. And we might look at um, this this uh, data format in something like a spreadsheet uh, to make a little bit more sense of it. So if I pull up a spreadsheet right here, so what this uh, data format here is trying to tell us is that um, even this is even though this is a bit difficult to decipher from here, uh, it's simply um, rows and and columns of a uh, data file. So this first column here simply has uh, the text name in it. The second one has uh, the text size, and then the following one has the uh, text code and the next one has the text color. Then the following uh, rows have some actual data. So here, uh, the first cat in this, in this CSV file is a Abyssinian cat. And the next one is a, is a Bengal cat. Then we have a British short hair cat. And a couple of more a couple of more cats. And the next next uh, column describes uh, the size of, of this particular cat breed. So for example, here, the Abyssinian cat we can see here is, uh, it, it just says small, small to medium here, and so on. And it has a uh, medium coat, and it can be a uh, multicolored, multicolored coat, so it says there it's ruddy, it, it can be red, and so on, and so on. So all of the contents of this CSV file, it's um, just the contents of a table, but instead of having columns from uh, left to right, uh, these pieces of data are separated with this with this semicolon character, and the rows uh, in in this table are the same as same as the rows in this uh, CSV file. So it's a fairly simple data format to decipher. So if we take one more example of how to read this um, uh, data file. Um, so instead of maybe printing how many how many uh, different rows we have here, let's figure out uh, how many different um, how many different breeds of cat do we have in this in this file? And uh, we should be able to able to just um, count and verify uh, what, what that is. So there is the Abyssinian cat that's one. The Beng the Bengalese is the second. Uh, British short hair is third. Egyptian uh, mau cat fourth. Siberian cat uh, fifth. So that's as many. So there should be five cats in this in this uh, CSV ta table or CSV file. Uh, so let's try to figure that out in code. So of course, um, as each of these uh, cat breeds are located on their own row we might just count the number of rows inside this, this file. Let's make a variable called row count, start it with zero, and um, once we read each row, we just uh, increment this count, row count is 
row count uh, plus one. And then we use this piece of information to say uh, at the end, just going to detent right here, that there are exactly uh, this many cat breeds. Okay, uh, let's run this and remember there should be four. there should be five. Okay, let's run this code quickly here, and as you can see, it says there are exactly six cat breeds. So we know there was supposed to be five. We got six here. Um, so the thing here, uh, if you look at this printout, so here we are only uh, counting the rows. So we are not necessarily counting the content of this file or what is the content that we're interested in. We're only counting how many rows there are. And remember this uh, on the left, this first row is not, act this is not actually a data row. This is just a title. So actually the data starts from the second row. So uh, we instead of starting from, from name, size, code, and color, we should be starting the count from, ab from the Abyssinian cat. Now, there are many ways to fix this. I mean, the easiest one would be just to uh, take this to, in, if we only need the number of, of cats, we can just um, subtract one from here and we get the correct, correct result saying there are exactly five cat breeds uh, because there were only, only only five rows of important data. However, if we were to need to use this, this data inside this file for something, then we can't do that. We have to think of something else. Um, a useful trick that works with, with uh, handling files is that um, um, if you remember the different ways to read a file, so we can we can always say for uh, row uh, in a file to go through all the rows, we could also use uh, the method that was called read line. Like this. Now this will read one line from this from this CSV file and one line only. Uh, now how this how this read line and this for loop actually work um, is that conveniently uh, they uh, this for loop actually picks up from where this read line um, ends with. So we can actually use this single read line to skip the first uh, line altogether. So this will read one line. This will read the first line, and um, therefore we can we can skip this first title line all altogether. And when this for loop starts to read the contents of the file, it will start from the second row. Um, also here something to remember something we haven't covered but um, uh, there is also a way to uh, move after reading one line we could also be moving back and forth in within the file um, but these these are something this is something that is not not cover, co which has not been covered during this course so for us it it suffices to think that um, once you start reading a file you always start at the at the beginning and you end at the end but in reality it's actually possible to read a file uh, in a way that you move your your uh, what is called a bookmark the place where you are reading the file uh, you can move it back and forth so you can actually read a line and then move the bookmark back and read the same line again and again but um, this is not some, something that we have covered and it's not not really that important all we have to uh, remember is here that if there is a there are extra lines uh, in a csv file like this title line here uh, we have to skip we have to skip them some somehow and uh, this uh, read line method here does the job 
perfectly well. Um, so now um, to come back to the actual problem, uh, how to count these, these lines these different cat breeds. Uh, so if we skip the first line altogether and then we process each each line from the CSV file, we should get the correct correct ans answer right here. Um, what else might we might we do with this? Uh, do with this data? Well, of course, we might just look at uh, each individual individual um, row and the details of, of the cats. So what you might say is, uh, well, what we might do is just um, process the uh, one individual line that we have read here from the file. And again, uh, we might want to trim trim it from all the excess, excess new lines and all other garbage first. So we trim the excess always. And then we want to get details. Uh, we want to extract details of our cats. So these details, um, as these um, individual items of data are separated by a semicolon, we can use uh, the split method that the, the uh, strings have to um, retrieve each individual um, each individual piece of information. So for example, if we want the cat bridge name, the description of its size and then the description of its coat. So we might uh, use the we might use the split method to do this. Split, and what we are going to be splitting this with it's the uh, character that's used to separate the, the, the data here. So that's going to be a semicolon. Oops. And then we might actually do something useful with this data. So we, for example, know that the uh, name for this cat is going to be the first item on the on this list that we have generated using split. So that's going to be uh, the first item and of course the first item on a list is always um, number zero. We know it's uh, the size of each cat is going to be the second item of, of a, on this list. So that's going to be uh, details zero, details one and let's take the color of the of the cat as well that's going to be now since we skipped um code that would be number two so color is going to be number three and then we might actually do something with this information let's just print it out so um let's print uh, something like the oops, the plus the name uh let's say um let's make it print something like the big uh, uh let's uh, the, the, let's make it print something like uh, the the big brown cat uh, is a something Okay, so then we get the uh, size, color, and finally the, the name, like this. So let's see what happens when we run this. So we get um, a description, so for example, 
the small to medium ruddy red blue fawn is an Abyssinian cat. Uh, the medium to large bright orange to light brown is a Bengal cat and so on and so on. So what we have done here is extracted these, these little details that were saved in this in this data file, this CSV file. We wrote this little program that extracts these details uh, using the methods we have we learned previously from from uh, manipulating strings of text. So we used um, row dot strip to remove the the excess uh, new lines and that sort of stuff. This we have already covered uh, when when reading text files. And then we uh, used split to uh, extract the individual details of all of our cat related information from this one line in this uh, CSV file. And finally, we just uh, uh, gave some names to these variables. So, for example, we know that the first item on this on this list generated by slip uh, by split contains the name of the cat. The second item on the list contains the size and so on and so on. So right. Um, I think that more or less concludes uh, the practical examples that we had for uh, today. Uh, so there is more there are more examples and uh, I think one exercise related with this this lesson. And uh, I strongly encourage to look at this chapter with care because you will need all of this this information while doing the practical assignment.